What's going on JR Aviation? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to a video that I think is going to be very, very interesting and pretty fun to make. Now I know what you're seeing in the title, everything wrong with our cheap Sears. How is that fun and interesting to you all? Well, yes, this video will cost our bank account quite a bit. It'll be very insightful for you all and it'll give us the peace of mind of making our plane that much better. Exactly. It'll be fun because we are going to get to learn all about what is underneath this plane and it should be really telling to see what we're in for after buying the cheapest Cirrus on the market. We will see if in the end it was all still worth it. As we've learned with buying the cheapest Lamborghini out there or Ferrari, you know, you're, you're not going to get some perfect vehicle. You know, you, it may have some problems here and there. And with this plane, it flew just fine, made it no problem. But we did notice a couple times on climb out, one of the cylinders was getting a little warm, nothing like into the red, nothing of huge concern. But once we got it out here to hot Arizona climate, it, it got even hotter to the point where it's a concern now. We didn't want to fly it anymore after that. You know, it's not worth taking the risk. So we immediately looked up shops that could diagnose our problem and look into this. And there was one or two shops that were uh, willing to look into it, but um, didn't find that perfect shop. So when we posted those first initial videos, a lot of you guys reached out to us saying that you have Cirruses or you work on Cirruses or stuff like that. But one guy in particular, his name's Scott, he goes by fish. He is inside this building here. I'll explain that in just a moment. But anyway, he's a Sears expert. He works on them at a Sears certified shop. He knows what he is doing. He says, guys, just let me come out there and do it right and save you a lot of money versus yeah. going to one of these big shops. So we said, let's do it. And here we are today. Now I know you guys are wondering, why isn't the plane right here? This is our tie down spot where we had it tied down. Well, we have some huge news, which is another reason this video is so exciting. This is incredible. We just pulled down a hanger. So you guys are gonna get a hanger reveal. What a nice bonus. This was just supposed to be a serious video, but here we're revealing our new hanger where, we're, where we'll be able to source some cars, the plane, all that good stuff. Yeah, we were not about to wait many, many years to get a T hanger. And anyway, they're ripping those down. It's favoring huge hangers for the big corporate guys and tearing down the GA uh, small hangers. So they're shifting toward, you know, bigger ballers. Okay, Chris, it's time we show them the new JR hanger. Let's go. Oh my gosh, from JR Garage to JR Hangar. Look at that, we got a few cars in here. Fish, hello, good morning. Look at that progress already. I see a cylinder on a table, this means business. So Fish, meet the vlog, vlog, meet Fish. So how long have you been working on Cirruses? Tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, what got you into aviation, working on planes? Uh, so I've been doing this for quite a long time. High mm -hmm. school, I grew up with my dad mm -hmm. and I had built a couple airplanes with him. And oh, nice. after high school, I decided to go get certified. So moved to Denver. Got uh -huh. my license, my AMP. Since then, I've had my IA, and I work on Cirruses. I'd say 80% of the time. Okay. Wow. I've been dealing with the Cirrus aircraft for about 19 years now. Wow. wow. So that's real that's, familiar with them. Yeah, that's that's since Cirrus started. It's since the beginning. Like, it, it is. These are great airplanes. They're simple. Mm, you like the plot. Complex. It's a great airplane to learn on. It's a great airplane to travel with. So you've worked on a lot of. Uh, these engines, the 360 Continentals. Now it'll get you where you want to go. Just keep up on the maintenance. That's the biggest yeah, thing. Yeah. And you got six cylinders. You know, having a couple more than most right. four-cylinder planes. Unlike, unlike the automotive stuff, you've got dual ignition. So you've got a spark plug on two spark plugs per cylinder. One on the top, one on the bottom. Pretty safety oriented, but also simple. Very. Uh, they're very. very Okay. Water cooling system. Right, yeah, this is all air cooled just like a, a VW. Yeah. Um, yeah. The systems are all uh, redundant in mm. case you do have a failure, you do have a backup. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So you could lose one spark plug, one ignition wire, um, but the other one is going to pick up and yeah. get you home yeah. or at least get you on the ground. So. Okay. But before we ran into any issue, major, major issue with the cylinder, we wanted to have it looked at because, of course, you're up in the air and so staying on top of it. This was one thing in particular that was concerning us a little bit. And um, yeah. what, what are we looking at now that it's off the plane? This is the number three cylinder. This right here in the little bit in the hole here, that's yep. the connecting rod. Here we go. Let's show that close up. Oh my goodness, yep. a gaping hole in our engine. Yeah, you, ah. can, actually, you can see the crankshaft in there. Um, Holy it's just smoke. off to the side here. Yeah. These are all removable, individual. So you don't okay. have to pull like the entire yeah. head assembly off or the block out if I you would. Just uh. about individually, obviously. Yeah. And then that's what we have here on the table. Oh my goodness, new versus old. We're gonna show <laughs> you guys side by side. That's why this video is so fascinating. Cause when do you get to look inside the 
engine of your plane. This is a rare access look. So, so this is the new bright and shiny one. Yeah, and you'll, you'll, the big thing you notice is the scratches that oh, make yeah. an X pattern in there. Look at that. And what that is for is that holds the oil against the cylinder wall to allow the piston rings to slide up and down lubricated. Mm -hmm. The piston rings are sitting inside the bore right now, oh, so that way snap. I can check the end gap. I push them up in there with the piston to where the tightest part of the cylinder bore is, and then I will check the end gaps to make sure they're correct. If not, we'll make them Wow. Back. Oh, and speak of that, we got the uh, old. So let's check out the cross hatching on the old one. Uh-oh, I don't really see any compared to this. Yeah, it's a big difference. Too far worn that it's not refurbishable, not... Yeah, better. this diameter here is larger than what factory spec calls for. Oh. The piston's just gone in and out too many times, yeah. and it's just yeah. opened it up. It's, you it's know, worn out. Thousandths of an inch, but it is out of, yeah. out of tolerance. Interesting. Is that like corrosion up top, or just that little... Uh, so, what we're looking at up there, that's some lead deposit. That's uh. carbon. Okay. Uh, up there, that's normal. Over time, that'll that'll uh, that'll happen. It'll accumulate. Gotcha. The all new gaskets will be going in uh, as needed. And the next video is going to be the fixing what's wrong when all of these parts go onto the plane. So stay tuned. Kind of like part two, episode two, is when everything goes back together and hopefully, fingers crossed, it runs good and our temperatures are solved. You know, that's that's what yeah, we're well, shooting for. We're gonna make sure it runs good because I'm putting my name in the book. What else, since this is the video of what's wrong with our plane, are there any other big red flags that uh, we, we need addressing? A, uh, an induction tube. Um, it's over here, I can grab it. Okay. So these induction tubes sit on the cylinder like so. Okay. And you can see that's a very tight radius. Yeah. Uh, so often they will crack just like that. Oh, look at that, yeah, you can see like So that's one thing you do want to oh, check geez. when you take the induction tubes off. Just right sure there. Not. This goes directly to the uh, intake port. Mm -hmm. Look right in here, where this goes. The oh, air yeah. goes right in here. This is the fuel nozzle. Mm -hmm. So fuel is also shared in this chamber. So you may see, because the fuel and the air do mix down in here, you may see some fuel coming out of here. Mm. Fuel's not injected through the tube, but they do meet right here. And you need the proper fuel to stay cool, right? Because more fuel absolutely. will keep a cylinder cooler. Yep. Just like a car, you can do a compression test in a plane. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. Just pull the spark plug out, and instead of turning the engine over like in a car, uh -huh. we're gonna feed the air into the cylinder at top dead center. Uh -huh. We're gonna use a differential compression gauge. So we're gonna know how much air we're putting in, and then the second gauge is gonna tell us how much air we're holding. Yeah. And depending on what that number is, we know if we're good to go or we need to look further and get into it. And when we were going around the plane last night, we found, let's see, we other things. Seal leaking. Ah, yeah, we got an oil leak so up here. So the propeller uh, bolts to the crankshaft back here. Mm -hmm. um, on the back side of the crankshaft flange, it's hard to see because there's some metal plates here covering okay. it, but there's a seal there. It's just like the front seal in your car. Mm -hmm. uh, that's leaking. Remove the prop, that's... pull the old seal out, and we'll stretch a new seal over the crankshaft. And what are the um, like push rod seals or something? Okay, so, we had a couple yeah. that were starting to so leak, I remember. There are, these are the push rod tubes. Ah, yes. This is your, your rocker cover here. This is your push rod tube. Okay. Inside this push rod tube is a push rod, ah, which yeah. goes into the cylinder or into the crankcase, which you can pro you might be able to see the lifter down there. Oh, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So those start to leak out if you're Yeah, there's careful. seals down here, and there's seals up here at the cylinder. Okay. Uh, we've got a couple uh, slight leaks, not bad, but we will reseal those. Okay, perfect. And while we're on the ground, the brake or something, you were saying how Sears so brakes Sears can is, get hot. Yeah, yes, they do. What they call differential or brake steering. The brake calipers get hot. It's a two-piston brake caliper system. Mm -hmm. And if you're dragging on them or if you're on them too much, they're, they'll get too hot and the O-rings will then get hard, the hydraulic fluid will leak. Mm. Uh, so there's indicators on the brakes. It's just a simple sticker. Um, once you get to a certain temperature, it turns a dark color and it's, you know, then you know, okay, I've overheated it. 
And it's very simple, just pull the caliper off, put a couple new O-rings on, quick bleed, and you're on the road. So ours are not quite leaking yet, but you said it's something to definitely yeah, keep an eye on. One side that's gotten a little hot, uh, and one side that's still okay. Um, okay. Two, obviously, because we got two main wheels. Not a big deal, we can get the one set. Well, that's one other thing you noticed. So far, anything I've seen here is, there's nothing that's out of normal. Or okay. out of character for the series. Okay. Just like if it was a Cessna. You know, I'd see normal things. You know, it's, there's nothing here that's catching my eye. Like, I don't think I'd fly this. Everything is all standard. Awesome. Normal okay. stuff. That's good. Just 2003, 17 year old planes, you know, right. stuff goes wrong. Yep. So yeah. don't, don't cheap nope. out on anything. And, and that's why we got you here, doing it right. Obviously, we wouldn't even know what we're doing. And B, we're not allowed to do this stuff because yeah, they that's have certifications. As owners, they can do a couple of things. You can you know, change your oil, uh, wash your windows, change your landing light, you know, simple stuff like that. Uh, mm -hmm. However, to get into the airplane and really start doing some maintenance, you gotta be licensed. That's where my AMP ticket comes in and my mm. IA, so I'm also allowed to inspect the airplane and sign it off, a certified aircraft. I know you said about washing windows as a owner. One thing that we also need to address, you guys can see there's a little bit of haze on the windows. Um, that we're gonna need to take care of. Uh, we're gonna have a guy come out, do like some wet sanding, basically just, just restoration of the windows. These ones are nice and clear, but there's some haze on these. Somebody probably cleaned them wrong, or it's basically like when the, the headlights on a car uh, get all used and yellowed out and just they need to be restored so same with these windows a couple of them the other sides are good so that's one other thing we're going to address oh one thing that normally goes bad on Sirius is right are the like the little landing puck things but these ones have been replaced recently yeah these ones look okay so Noah's gear doesn't have shocks or struts per se it's a they're solid pieces of rubber mm. and they will compress yeah. Uh, dependent, you know, because of the weight of the aircraft. That's where you get your shock absorption. Some of the newer SR-22s, um, they started coming with struts on them. Either this plane had them replaced recently or it's been landed pretty well. Uh, I yeah, think they're replaced. Well, if they were not, if these had not been replaced, um, you'd start seeing cracking just like any other rubber. Okay. You know, because especially with the engine heat. The thing you do want to do with these is you put a little bit of a silicone spray on them and that helps preserve them or keep them moist and keep them from cracking. Huh. So all of our car viewers love to tell us to straight pipe cars. Are those mufflers or cats or what are they? Uh, nope, these are mufflers. Yep. Ah, okay. Do people remove those? Uh, <laughs> no, no, you wouldn't want that, trust me. The drone and, yeah. It's already um, loud so enough. You'll notice there's two different sizes. Yeah, why is that one smaller? And so this one looks just like that one. However, this has this duct over it. That's where you get your heat. Oh. oh! So it's just yeah. a shroud over the top of your muffler yeah. and it picks up the radiant heat from that and it goes through these hoses. So this hose here blows air in from the front of the cowling, yeah. pressurizes this and blows it back up to this valve. Wow. Which then you either open or close depending on how much heat you want. Right, yeah. If it's closed, it dumps it overboard. If it's uh, open, then it brings it into the ah, cockpit. Right, because I think an air-cooled Volkswagen would have the same sort of heat system. Because yep. water-cooled cars will have the the coolant going through like yeah, the heater the, core. Yeah, the coolant's hot. Yeah. So yep. in this case, you got to get it. From, Interesting. You got to get it from somewhere. So if we have a crack in that exhaust that pipe, that is an inspection that is done every year. You don't want to be sucking in exhaust. You take this cover off yeah. and you pressurize the exhaust system yep. to make sure that you don't have any cracks. Yeah. Because exactly, you start getting carbon monoxide in the cabin. Mm. It's like out. For everybody wondering, no, this plane does not have air conditioning. Newer Cirruses do. What's your thought on air conditioning and the weight that it takes up? If it was up to me, I'd run air conditioning. You're gonna sit on the ramp, yeah. you got four people in the airplane, and you can only keep the door open for so long. That's you can't true. roll the windows down once you get going. Wasn't even an option on these G1s, right? Or, yeah, no. yeah, no, it only came later, so no problem. Uh, then again, we say no problem. It's 120 degrees outside in the summer in Arizona, but that's okay. We're not going to be doing much flying in those temperatures. You notice how our 430 Garmin was uh, very old with data. It needs an update and it needs the new maps for the West Coast terrain areas and yeah, stuff. Yeah, there's uh, certain subscriptions you can buy. There's a couple companies out there, Jefferson and Garmin. Mm. Um, and this aircraft uh, hasn't, the updates have not been done in quite a while. Okay. So you guys will get on board with one of them pick up a subscription and then that's something you download and then you can put it into the airplane. Okay. Yeah. This is of course the major work and this is going down next video. 
We're gonna get started later today into tomorrow and all that stuff. So you guys gotta stay tuned. Subscribe if you're new. This is what's going down. That's what's wrong with our plane. Fish is here to help save us and fix it. Thank goodness. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Battery's about to die. Stay tuned for part two. Thank you, Fish, for being here. It's gonna be a good uh, next couple episodes. We got so many exciting things on the way. Subscribe if you're new. Drop a comment down below, and we will see you guys in the next one. See you.